Okay, good afternoon YouTube. Um, right, here's a little um, show you the job shop J, uh, job for today. Um, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I started this um, a few days ago and turned it and I, I videoed the turning and then um, then I came to cut the splines and, and I scrapped the part. Uh, <laughs> but there we go. So, um, so since uh, I, I've had to come off a job now and I'm, we, I've got a free couple of hours now so I, I come back onto it. Um, uh, I scrapped the part because I forgot to add the uh, the width of the cut and I'll show you how, how, it, how I'm going to come in and cut these splines. Um, but that's that's why, you know, simple mistake. Um, probably rushing a little bit. Uh, it's very difficult, it's probably more difficult than uh, you imagine to try and um, try and video stuff and think about what you're doing um, at the same time um, but yeah so um, yeah in fact I got the uh, if we go over here you know I've I've kept the uh, I've kept the old part as a reminder not to be such a uh, uh, fool again um, as you can see um, when I turned it I, I turned a one inch stub on this end and that's so we can set it up in the uh, index on the mill and then we'll come in and we'll cut this off after and uh, and face it off and there's an oil galley um, going down through there and it intersects with this uh, hole here um, so there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of different um, diameters on you you can see here um, we've got a diameter and a key seat um, then that reduces only by a, a very very tiny amount I'm sort of I'm hoping it's not where <laughs> um, this this caused the, the reduction in the diameter there but it does look like there's a, a sort of definite um, shoulder there so fingers crossed we'll be alright because obviously I haven't got the, the dimensions of the original part it's off a bike it's, um, it's either it's, um, I'm not sure if it's front or rear wheel um, shaft, but um, uh, obviously they don't make them anymore. It's it's a vintage bike, and uh, and they're having difficulty getting it. And as you can see, what's happened is it's bust this key seat right out of there. Um, it's a little bit confusing the the configurations. I I'm not that familiar with bike um, uh, shafts, um, but you've got there's a hell of a lot of keys in here so you take an hell of a lot of machine um, material away so you've got a big quarter inch <coughs> woodruff key in here and you've got a little uh, 5 16 key here and then if we come up this end we've got a 5 16 key here and we've got a 5 16 key here and also I'm not sure if you can see on the camera it does appear to be something in there. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it out because I think this 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 portion um, I believe is 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 a bearing surface, um, hence the, the the oil supply to it. So I can't really <coughs> um, see why you would need this in here. So um, for the moment we're leaving it out. Um, you, can, <laughs> you can see it was done in a pile of different operations, um, a pile of different setups and again I, I'm not exactly sure why that is. If you look at the large key, it's, it's in line with this, this spline so that would make sort of sense because you do it in one setup. But then you come across to this uh, smaller 516 key and that is we look that's offset over to the one side uh, which is a little bit strange why it is that they they've done that um, so it sort of tells me that it's, it's not its position although it could be <coughs> perpendicular to this key it's not um, it's <coughs> it's it's not on the uh, on the center line. This is slightly below, um, so that's that's going to probably prove to 
be uh, a little bit of an issue. Um, <clears throat> and then these key seats at the back here, if you if you look, um, they're sort of <clears throat> not in any relationship to uh, to anything else either. You know, and the hole, the hole's not in in uh, any relationship to anything. So it's a little bit of an odd one. Um, spline wise <clears throat> again uh, it's relatively simple because um, basically you've got if we can just see we've got four splines at 90 degrees to each other um, which we're going to come down and we're, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut these uh, these recesses now ideally you'd want a 90 degree um, cutter to come in and, and actually cut them Oh, focus you yeah um, but we haven't got one um, so we're going to come in with a slit in saw and recess out and then we're going to come in then uh, with an end mill and uh, just remove this material here now it, it does appear I'm not sure exactly it looks possibly a shaper or, or something I'm, I'm not exactly sure I was being uh, or maybe even uh, the same cutter and they just they've just sort of um, you know rotated it around degree by degree and just removed the material <clears throat> but it's not actually a uh, an important diameter as long as it clears um, this this diameter down here so we're, we're okay up here we can come in there and clear that out um, so let's have a look at the setup so we got in in uh, in the old uh, spin indexer we've aligned it with the axis of the machine so we're, we're squared with this way and we're squared with that way um, <clears throat> we've aligned our slit in saw um, with the center line and then we've come up if I take you over to my little sketch here so as I don't forget the, uh, the width of the cutter basically we're going to come in we kind of come up uh, 3.23 above the center line come in chop down and then we're going to drop 3.23 below the center line and uh, and trim it out so we set our our x0 and we set our y0 and we, we got it's a bit of an odd setup on this end because i i'd never never had a, a tail stock for this uh this indexer uh generally i don't do particularly long um work in it uh, so I've never needed one, um, but obviously, you know, the day you need one, uh, <laughs> they tend to be a little bit difficult to find. So, um, so at the moment we got uh, my toolmaker's vice up on parallels, up on some, <coughs> up on some, uh, up on three to one blocks, and then on some parallels that I had to grind so that we hit the uh, the center height. So this is how set up. I'll get you set up on it on a tripod now and we'll uh, we'll start cutting these uh, grooves Okay, so that's our first groove cut. Um, <clears throat> what we're going to do now is we're going to drop below the center line by 3.23 and uh, 
then we'll uh, take another go. To uh, apologise for the wobbling. Right, we'll lock the spindle there. Okay. Okay, we're at um, about 95, 95 RPM. About one and a quarter um, inches a minute. Okay, so that's our first two um, two grooves cap. What we're going to do is, well, we'll take this now. 90 degrees lock him off and we'll uh, we'll check that uh, spline okay so Okay, we're looking at about four point four point eight. Right, if we check our uh, original one. I know that's good, otherwise I'd just stop the camera now, so oh. okay, so that's about four point eight three, four point eight four, something like that. So we're good. Um, <clears throat> so we've rotated 90 degrees now. Um, what we'll do is we'll do our cut at uh, minus 2.3.23 and then we'll, we'll do our um, plus 3.23. Uh, oh, while, whilst I'm up here, yeah, um, anybody, uh, I know I've seen the um, the um, the toyo um, frames for these um, for all in these and um, I was very tempted uh, to buy one originally <clears throat> but this one when I saw the price of them to be honest I uh, it put me off a little bit so this all this is is an aluminium block with a recess machined in there the locks onto this this tab that's on the front of um, your bridge ports, and there's a tap hole in there, and then the same with with this top one, which has got a, a little recess machined in there to line up the tab, and obviously it's just um, you can just see there it's got a slot machined in there that uh, locates on the tab, and these are just drilled in there, and then you don't lose your scale either you know you can keep your scale on there nothing if you still want to use your scale you can and then this is connected with um you can just about see behind there so there's a brass bush in there um with a, a plate on the back here that actually connects that via the uh screw there so you know it was uh i think it took about about an hour perhaps to uh to put on and cost me nothing so <laughs> and Anybody who knows me by now knows that that's the uh, that's the right price.
<coughs> right, so we'll uh, we'll get this locked down now and uh, carry on cutting, and I'll bring you back when we've cut all the recesses. Okay, so I'm afraid you missed a little bit because um, you weren't here and my battery went but um, what I've done is I've come in with a little uh, quarter inch end mill and um, I picked up on on the centre um, between the splines and I've come down and I've cleared that out and all I've done is <coughs> <pardon me. coughs> I've rotated it 10 degrees um, either way and cleaned out both the sides and it's, and it's looking uh, reasonably good now um, what I'm doing now is I'm just putting a little bit of a chamfer on this back edge here um, we'll, hit, we'll hit the edge of the splines with a file later um, but we're going to do a little bit of manual CNC um, and what we're going to do is we're going to I'll bring it around to the next So that's the centre of the next um, uh, spline there. We're zeroed up on our X, we're zeroed up on our quill. So we're going to bring the little chamfer cutter down um, and we're going to plunge down into it till we get our zero. We're going to lock the quill and then all we're going to do is gonna, we're going to rotate the actual um, uh, indexer whilst we, we got the cutter engaged and um, put a little bit of a chamfer on our bag edge. Right. Let's bring it down. You're gonna have to excuse my arm a minute because I got a lot of quill. Okay. So we're actually cutting now, we're down in the cut. Um, I'm gonna pull a pin very gently now. Um, I'm going to keep a little bit of tension on the locking screw and we're going to rotate it um, in both directions and, and put a chamfer on our back, back edge. Obviously when I'm rotating um, clockwise it's not the bad because the mill's um, conventional milling. When I'm coming back the other way it wants to climb. Um, that's why we're running it quite fast and uh, hopefully it's not going to drag us in there. Let me uh, see if I can... There we go, sorry about the quality. And now we've got a nice chamfer on our back edge. Um, now the next things uh, we need to do are, let me bring it back out. Next thing we need to do now is we need to put um, the woodruff cutter in. Um, uh, line it up so we've got one of these on top and then we're going to 
pick up the center and we're going to drop down and we're just going to plunge in with the uh, with the woodruff cutter. I'll get that set up and I'll bring you back now. Okay, so um, this is our um, quarter inch woodruff cutter or um, There we go, about 6.4 millimeters. It's probably uh, actually crap on there. Yeah, 6.3 millimeters, so it's a quarter inch woodruff cutter. Um, <coughs> what we're going to do is we're going to pop them up in the spindle and we're going to come down. Uh, we're going to align the top of this because uh, this one happens to be. Uh, smack on center uh, So we're gonna mount them up in the spindle drop down touch the top of this And then we got half of this diameter uh, Usually what what, it, what it's nice to do is to come down touch off on the top and then come around and touch on the bottom obviously because of the um, The diameter of the cut that we can actually come in and uh, touch there So we, we need to do a little bit of maths on this one Let's get them in the machine after I don't know how many years of, uh, of using this machine uh, with no brake I finally got around to changing the brake pads on this the other day so I've actually got a brake now it's quite a novelty right so we should be at 90 degrees actually if we if we do it on zero we won't get confused that way come on get in there you <clears throat> Okay, so there we go. Okay, if I bring you around the other side now, you can see what uh, what we're about to do. Right then, so I'm gonna bring this down so we. Just touch there, <clears throat> and I'm gonna zero it. I have my quill, and I'm gonna drop down 3.15, which is half my cutter. There, zero again. And then I'm going to drop down half a diameter, which happens to be 22.2, .2, so that's 11.1 I need to drop. Okay, I'm going to lock my spindle and zero it. There we go. Just a little check. Okay, it's looking good. It looks quite on center. Um, <coughs> As far as set in position, um, the best way to be honest is we're going to use use the original, and we're going to sit the key, um, the cutter in the seat. Um, as far as um, uh, 
that the length dimension is considered. What we're trying to do now is get it lined up for a bloody start there. Okay, so that's, that's in there. Okay, it's, it's no wiggling back and forth. That's fully engaged. That's up against there, so we're good to go. Right, I'm gonna zero my X there. <coughs> okay. Um, I'm going to use just a normal uh, depth mic and try and straddle the, the diameters a little bit to get a depth. I'm not that concerned if we, because we got to um, we got to remake a key for this anyway. Let's so you can see what we're actually doing. So that bad they can see through it then, can I? So we're touching on a diameter both sides and we just want to get down okay so we're looking at uh, five about 5.3 deep let's just recheck that It's the easiest thing to do in the world, I gotta be honest. Right, we're down in it. Okay. Right, okay, yeah. So about five point three deep. So what I'll do is my spindle's locked and lock my my X and loosen off my Y. And I come in, um, how fast are we gonna run? Um, okay, right. Oh, box. Sorry. What I'll do is I'll um, I'll bring you around the, the back traps now for a, for a better view. Hang on a minute. Okay, so you're gonna have to excuse the um, <clears throat> the digital zoom a little bit, um, but it's the only way that I can uh, get you close enough to uh, <clears throat> see what's gonna happen. Okay, so start the spin. Okay, that's about 120 RPMs, and that looks okay. So I'm gonna come in and uh, come in and touch off.
that's um okay we now um, okay so that's um that's about all i can do at the moment as far as this part's concerned um because um i i am got a 5 16 um uh woodruff cutter which i go on order but um it's not gonna be here uh, um probably until monday so not a great deal i can do uh now it doesn't really matter if we uh we lose um our um relationship now to the shaft because the red like i showed you earlier the rest of the keys are, are pretty random as far as their placement or or do certainly appear to be um <clears throat> Uh, when the other cut the gas you will uh, we'll come back and uh, and have a little look at it and cut the other keys and then we'll we'll drill through all um, part it off and uh, and put the, the oil hole down on there. Let's, uh, let's get it out and we can have a look. Okay, so um, that's about it. Um, as far as what we can do at the moment, um, I'm going to take a file now and just just clean these uh, splines up and the uh, the keyway and uh, and whatnot. And then hopefully we'll have a, uh, a nice looking part. There's our key where we just cut. Um, not bad actually, considering that's a uh, pretty old cutter. Um, I'd never used it, to be honest. I'd never had uh, reason to cut a, a quarter inch keyway, but. But there we go. Um, we just have a, yeah. So, uh, you know, that's uh, that's basically it. Um, I think it's it's well, it's certainly turning out uh, quite nicely. So um, there we go. I mean, that's it for for this little bit then as soon as the other cutter comes in we'll uh, we'll get back on with it right i'll uh, see you next time